Why, hello everyone, Spencer here, also known as LEGO Dude 11, and in today's video, this is my Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania spoiler review. So without further ado, let's discuss. Okay, so as I just mentioned, this is my Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania spoiler review, spoiler heavy uh, mentions in this video, so if you don't want to know anything about this movie, get out now. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of housekeeping out of the way, housekeeping out of the way. A couple things to keep in mind here. I just got out of seeing this movie, so I'm recording this the same day. This is my first movie review for 2023, so thank you for tuning into this one. I did make a Willow review, which was my first sit-down review. If you missed that, don't forget to hit, uh, click that card up there. Also, I made another video about me and my friend who went to see this movie. He just did not like this movie. I understand why. We have our own opinions of the movie. This is where I'm going to be sharing mine today. Um, so be sure to hit that like, not card, that, that, that card up there where you can see, listen to his review of the movie, his quote-unquote review. I like to get his thoughts because he's more critical about things. I'm not making that as a judgment. I'm making that as his own opinion, um, stating the fact that we <laughs> we had a good time at the theater. We had a really good time at the theater. Maybe he didn't enjoy the movie, but I'm sure he had a. I mean, he likes going to movies with me, so we had a fun time there. Did he have a? Did he enjoy the movie? No. Uh, but you can listen to what he had to say about that. So uh, yeah, that out of the way. I don't even talk about it. Let me get into my thoughts. So. How I always start these movie and TV show reviews is I always make a list of notes. I almost was about to go noteless, if that's even a word. I was about to go noteless and uh, do this free-handed. And uh, I went, no, because I, I, I want to write these things down before I forget. So it might be something I forget. But it, it, anyway, if I do forget it at the end, don't forget to leave a comment. Anyway, the first thing I always talk about is the score and soundtrack. And I love this one. I, 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 I be honest... I like this movie more than most people do. I like Marvel more than most people. Not just Marvel, but the MCU. And because of what this phase, because of what this multiverse saga is doing, I love the whole thing. I, I love how it's tying into the Infinity Saga as well. I love how this movie and this phase, like people are like, oh, this is tight. Kang is, has been here all along. And I kind of believe that. Um... I want to say right hand right now that I feel like by the end of uh, – after this movie, me and my friend were discussing it and I kind of – I said, okay, when Secret Wars comes out, Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, I feel like by the time those movies come out and Secret Wars comes out, I'll be the only one sitting in the movie theater. I doubt it, but it would be funny because like everybody is cut off from Marvel. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, so that's just funny. I thought about that <clears throat> because I'm diehard Marvel. But – I got, I got sidetracked from my own thoughts. The score and the soundtrack was great. I love listening to this. I love Christoph Beck, who did this movie and did the first two Ant-Mans. He is on my top ten movie composers. Uh, he did Free Guy when Free Guy came out. He's great. He's great. Um, this soundtrack is an epic banger to listen to. I didn't really get to talk about it with my friend all that much. Michael, he was like, just critiquing, just talking about the movie. I didn't, I, I said the soundtrack and he didn't, it's, he's not musical, so it's fine. But, I like this soundtrack a lot. The something else about this movie that I loved um, because I, I'm a fan of this movie. Um, I, I I liked it. I you know Thor: Love and Thunder was not my jam. I just want to I just want to make that forward. I I'm a I watched Christian Harloff the Christian Harloff channel. And he said he liked this movie. I'm kind of siding with him. I'm not saying because he liked the movie. I'm saying it. I agree with his thoughts. And uh, <clears throat> it, Thor: Love and Thunder was not for me. So if you come at me like I'm a Disney shill, no 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 no. This is my genre. This is one of my favorite, or I guess there's only three Ant-Man films. I, I I, feel like this one kind of ties with the first movie because the second one did not have, although I like the ghost villain and the movie was kind of fun, the second movie for me just did not, it, 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 it underwhelmed me a little bit. It helped in the Infinity Saga and it was fun to see, but this one, it felt more cohesive in the sense like, oh, Here's Modoc, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Here's Modoc, that that ties from the first movie. Here's the Quantum Realm that deals with the first movie. Now they talked with the Quantum Realm in the second movie, and also it was confusing because why all of a sudden is Janet like all of a sudden not happy? Like that conversation that they were having at the end of Ant Man Two. That's just suddenly like they weren't talking about it in the span of five years or ten years, however long ago this was, eight years. So it's like, ah, eh, man, it's a little weird, but logic is dumb. Um. 
So yeah, I like the genres they put into this movie, specifically Star Wars. It, it, the battles with the characters, the, the the rebellion coming in, it was great. I, I love that. My fan, my friend did not it did not jam with him. It's okay. Uh, number two, Strange World, which my friend mentioned as we're sitting there. Look, this exact this is what Strange World is trying to be. I agree. Um, I think I don't know if that's what Peyton Reed, the director, was trying to interpret. Or if Kevin Feige said, yes, we need a, something like Strange World in the Marvel Universe. And they were like, yes, this is the movie to do that. I don't know if that's what they were going for or if they had just decided to throw in this movie and it looked like Strange World. I have no idea. But I liked it. I mean, I, I have not seen Strange World from beginning to end. I've, all I've seen is the trailers, all bits and pieces of it. So if you told me that after watching Strange World, I went... Ew! I don't want to watch a Marvel movie based off of that. But after coming out of Ant-Man and Quantum Mania, I liked it. Uh, you know, Star Wars, Strange World, Fifth Element, Dune, other things, sci-fi. I'm a fan of sci-fi. I dug this movie and all the creatures. Before I get to um, Kang and Modok, I want to talk about the characters because the characters and the plots. I mean, there's there's a bunch of stuff going on, but I don't really care. Um. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on, but let me just start out by saying the fact that this movie is called Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, well, there's two parts of this movie, the beginning and the end, the pro, not really prologue, because that's not the way, best way to put it, the opening and the closing are both in San Francisco, they both bookend the movie outside of the quantum realm, okay, I, it, by the way, if, you, if you're like, oh, you said it, uh, spoilers, so there's spoilers, um, but yeah, but there's, that's what happens in this movie. And then pretty much the rest of the movie, say 90% of the movie, I'm going I'm to take the, the beginning and the end, and it could be 5%, but I'm going to say 10% of the movie is outside of the quantum realm, and 90% of it is in the quantum realm. Okay, so with that said, if you weren't sure about that, like if you were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that, well then why would you go into it expect, knowing that, because the name of the movie is Quantum Mania. Just thought a little thought of there. But I liked all the genres and everything. Um, the characters, I love seeing all of them back. Scott Lang, Paul Rudd is great. Evangeline Lilly is great. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is great. Michael Douglas is great. Cassie, you know, it's a new actress. It's a different actress than uh, uh, Endgame. I don't mind. I don't mind her. People were criticizing... People are always criticizing the MCU. I don't know, I understand why. Even these teenage girls, I don't mind America Chavez. I understand she was a little cringy, but I didn't mind her. My friend cringed at her. My friend cringed at Cassie. I'm like, where is there to cringe about? But anyway, besides that, before I get on a rant, um, I want to... I, I love Miss Marvel, the show Miss Marvel. I cannot wait to see her in the Marvels. I hope that they don't make her that way, because if they do, that totally undermines what the Miss Marvel show was. But if they use her in the same way they did in the show, good, I like that. But Cassie was effect, uh, effective in the sense of this movie. There were parts and pieces, like my friend said, how at the end of the end battle where she was not used well. Where she's sending the signal to them, and I, I feel like there was a, a little bit lost in translation. Like, oh, the script says this. Well, wait a minute, we have to do this because we, we have to suddenly now make Cassie feel for her dad, feel emotional, but there was no, like, because we didn't see her loss, lose Scott Lang in the movie, it kind of felt like, it kind of felt cheapened. It, it, like, I didn't really feel that. I, I felt like, okay, they're emotionally pushing her character t t to be with her dad. I, I kind of felt that. And there was a sympathetic moment there at the end when they're they're hugging, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself in the final battle, but it, it, I felt that I felt that bond. I I, uh, I really I, I really like that father and daughter relationship because that's been going for all three movies. I kind of like that, but it felt under undermined a little bit as I was watching my friend laugh at the movie, not because it was a joke, because of the whole thing going on relationship. I'm thinking to myself, okay, because or we were talking about it before, like okay. But you have not seen Cassie train. All you know is that she has a suit. Well, right, but she's fighting here and she doesn't know how to use it. And then 
when she realizes, wait a minute, maybe I can do this. This is what my dad did, and then she does it properly. I, I liked it. I thought, I, I mean, you didn't really see her training, but I thought that, hey, it was, she did it, yay! So, yeah, I liked it. Uh, I like the genres. I like that. I like all the characters. They meet Bill Murray for one scene, and then he's gone. I, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Other, other movies do that. I mean, you, you see a character, they're gone. I mean, it's fine. Bill Murray was there. It wasn't like he was in the entire movie, but he was there. He had some, he had some, not action, he had some dialogue, and he, he, He's not comedy gold. I mean, he's not Harrison Ford. He's not a comedian. I mean, he's funny in Ghostbusters. He's funny in this and that. But he worked. I mean, he was effective, I, I would say. I, I, I mean, he, he helped the story in some way, but whatever. Some people didn't like him. I haven't I've heard nobody saying, oh, Bill Murray sucked. I've heard people say the movie sucked like my friend did. But anyway, moving on. He was there. Uh, there were two other things. The characters of the Rebellion, the Freedom Fighters, kind of serve no purpose, kind of served a purpose. Um, again, I like this movie, I like the genre, I like what they're going for. As my friend said, Star Wars did this and it didn't work well. Okay, but Peyton Reed has done one episode of The Mandalorian, which was great, one of the greatest Star Wars franchises ever, or sub-Star Wars franchises. He wanted to make an Avengers level style movie in the MCU based with a Star Wars type feel, and I feel like this is what this was what was presented. I feel like it worked. There were characters in it that looked like Star Wars creatures and this, and then the Freedom Fighters, and then there was a char a female character that served no purpose that helped Cassie, kind of served no purpose, but she was she was fun in there. She was doing stuff and like waving my arms around, and uh, and then there was um who else was there? Oh. There was a guy that looked like Broccoli. It was kind of funny. I laughed at that. There was a cantina scene that was quite funny in and of itself. And then there was... What else was there? There was a guy named Quaz who I thought was going to be Quasar when they cast him, but apparently it wasn't. And then he was a telepath. <laughs> he was a telepath that read minds. And he was, again, just in the Rebellion. I liked the actor because it was the actor from The Good Place who played Chidi. I did not get that. Um, and I, I was, I, I, I love the casting, but again, he was there, they were there to, like, help fight in the end battle, which kind of felt a lot like Star Wars at the end of, you know, this is exactly like it was. When, the, when the end battle happened, it was almost like the Rise of Skywalker, when all of them came in, it was like, hey guys, send this signal, <laughs> hey, let's come in and fight. It was, like, it was almost like that, but I liked it more. I don't know why I liked it more than Rise of Skywalker, but I did. Anyway... Um, Quaz was fun to see. There was this guy made of ooze that kept talking about holes, which was kind of funny. And then, it, not and then, but he was voiced by David Dashamana. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he was the guy who played Kurt in the first two Ant-Man movies. But he was in this movie. But they didn't have Luis or any of the other characters, any of the other ex-cons. Because they were trying to, and I understand why, because they didn't fit into the story that was taking place in the quantum realm and done otherwise. Now, they could have had him in a scene. But that's fine. Um, all of the plots, like Kang, like they start out this movie showing Kang, and I love, I love Kang. I mean, Kang and MODOK are my favorite things about this movie, even though, the, the, like I mentioned, the soundtrack's great, the genre's great. Um, they, they just did them effectively. As my friend said, they, he didn't like what happened in the end because MODOK was killed off. Um, I'm just going to say right here, MODOK was killed off by a dick joke. Well, because he he tried to help Kang. He tried to he tried to get rid of Kang. Take down Kang. I'm seeing Kang five times. I'm sorry. Um, and then in the in light of that, he was like, "Oh, you know what?" Cassie's like, "You should stop being. You should really stop being a dick." Oh, light bulb moment. I'm gonna stop being a dick. All right. Well, in that case, I gotta go stop Kang. And and that makes me stop being a dick. It's a funny joke, right? Well, I mean, I got a couple of laughs from people at my theater. And my friend's just sitting there like... Ugh. And I'm like, oh, okay, sorry. And then... He he dies. He dies. There's no really character development there, but I I found MODOK to be funny. I I laughed because it was Darren, and every time he like revealed his mask, I was like, Darren? <laughs> it's kind of funny, but... Yeah, um, and then he says, I'm an event. I died in Avenger. Uh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't, dude. 
But yeah, that I I thought Modok was funny. I thought Kang was effective in the sense because I said my friend, he's like, oh well, it was kind of done the same way as Gore because it didn't it didn't feel as threatening. I'm like, well, I thought it was threatening enough. I'm like, I think Jonathan Majors is perfect in this role for Kang. He has there's different versions of him. We saw him as He Who Remains and stuff. And uh, we saw him in the beginning with Michelle Pfeiffer and your know, friends, and then and then she realized that he's that she sees his mind, and she realizes that he's not a good guy. So, yeah, I mean, I really, uh, I, I really thought Kang was effective and all throughout the entire movie that they showed him in the backstory, uh, working with Janet and all this and that. So I really liked it. The final battle. There's one thing. There's one plot in particular. You know, you can go watch my friend talk about it. We kind of talked about it a little bit, but in depth. Like there was this whole plot. Like when they shrink down and the ants get in there. Scott, uh, Hank Pym is using his thing. Um, using his hearing aid or using his little earpiece. And in the final battle, one of the things they use to take down Kang are the ants. The ants come in and they're giant. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention before I forget this one. There was a bunch, uh, a moment where a bunch of Scott Langs happened. They go into the quantum, um, into the multiversal quantum particle thing to save, to steal it for Kang because Modok and Kang are helping Scott find the device, and then so they can get Kang out. So they can get Kang out because that's the whole plot of the movie. And uh, and then there's a whole bunch of Scots everywhere. A whole bunch of Scott Langs. I don't know why I'm saying Scott like that, but I am. And then. As that's happening, you see uh, Hope go down there to try to save him. There's a whole bunch of Hopes, but the, all, all the Scots are like... There's one Baskin Robbins Scott who's like, Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? And there's like, There's Baskin Robbins one. Why are you dressed like that? Why are you dressed like that? Like, that was pretty funny. I like that moment. But then the final battle, he uses the ants to take down Kang. I I really like that. I really dug everything that happened in the final battle that was going like, like punching Kang, all the fight movements and everything. Kang flicks uh, Hope and Sky at one point just to see how powerful Kang is. That was an effective move. But I love the Ant's final battle. Like when, when, when Scott comes in and is big and everything and then they, they are big together. Oh, it, it, I like that a lot. My friend did not like Cassie as I mentioned before. But the whole thing with the Ants was really fun to see because this is called Ant-Man. So I like that the Ants came in. I like how that worked. Um... Every, every, I mean, the Modoc and stuff worked for me. The final battle, like with the rebellion coming in, it was, really felt like Star Wars. It really felt good. It really felt like something new. I really liked the style that Peyton Reed brought to this. My clothing, my, I, I, I just, I, bleh, I'm sp speaking in tongues now, guys. Um, but yeah, I, there was just a bunch of stuff that worked for me. At the end of the movie, the the fight, like when they get back, they just open this portal home, and you know, you see the dynasty, you see them all destroyed, and then, well. I, 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 I feel like this movie is Age of Ultron all over again because people are like, oh, the score is like Eternals. Is it really that bad? No. I was talking to my friend and he said Eternals was way better than this. It was a, it was a, it was a more vibrant movie. Not vibrant. It was a more visually stunning movie. It had better characters. Well, Ant Man's a better character, but I, I feel like this movie. This movie is like Age of Ultron for Phase Five. Multiverse of Madness was Age of Ultron for Phase 4, but in a different way because this does Kang, not, it doesn't do Kang dirty, but in the final battle when Kang is gone, like you see him in the healing, because they're, they punched the multiversal thing, the multiversal quantum device, and then he shrunks down kind of like Yellow Jacket did and is gone forever, right? So we think, but he might not be gone. But then they uh, they all go home because Hope comes out and punches Scott Lang because Scott Lang, you think Scott Lang is going to die based off of their fight. And he doesn't. The, the helmet smashed and all this. So he's not gone. So he's not dead. Hope comes out, saves them. They go home through the portal. But I feel like it's the same way when I watch Age of Ultron. I love that movie more and more. But I, I'm a huge Marvel fanboy. But as I'm watching Age of Ultron and they defeat... With the Iron Man blast, the Vision blast, and the Thor's hammer blast, and then Ultron is just like, "I'm gonna run away now." Okay, that feels very just out of the blue. Like he's not destroyed. It's not like Loki where they they get rid of Loki. Like they destroy. Like they put the nuke in outer space, and all of a sudden, boom, Loki's army's gone. Or like 
they kill Thanos or they snap and Thanos is gone. It's just like kind of like the Age of Ultron. Like all the robots run away and oh no, Ultron's gone. It's like, wait a minute. But <laughs> that's how Kang's gone? Now, I didn't personally mind because I'm a Marvel guy, but he's just gone. Most people don't like the way that they get rid of him, but I feel like that was, an, uh, that was a strategy that, boom, he disappeared. <gasps> oh, oh, but no, there's, there's thousands more, there's billions more, way more Ken. So we're, gonna not, we're not done seeing him, and then the movie ends with the, with the title, Kang, is, Kang Will Return. But there's a couple post credit scenes that I want to get to um, that I love. The first post-credit scene, both post-credit scenes I really liked, and my friend was not sure what to think. I, uh, the first one was ripped straight out of the comics. Some people were saying, oh, it feels like a Saturday Night Live skit. And, um, it, I loved it because it was ripped straight out of the comics. And I have not heard uh, someone say that they love this post-credit scene. I've just heard people say it was alright. Some people, the one person, Christian Harloff, that really liked this movie said, I've not heard him say anything about the post credit specifically, but... I like this. This is what I wanted from this movie, from Phase 5 specifically. I think this is a great start to Phase 5 in particular, but it showed all the Kangs. You see three Kangs, and then saying, how many did you call? There's a Pharaoh, a Pharaoh Tut Kang, like a King Tut Kang, a future Kang, and a, a the Kang called Immortus, who is not he who remains, but a different Kang that's, that's called Immortus. And, they all, and he says, they touched the multiverse. We can't get, let them get to it. And how many did you call? All of them. And it's like, awesome. It's like all these Kangs are in the arena. And they're going, oh, 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 yeah, oh, oh. And then you see the one guy that's blue. It's kind of like stripped straight out of the comics. Oh, I loved it. It was a great scene. And then the second one was a little tease for Loki Season 2, where you see Loki and Mobius sitting at this old-timey place, like 1920s. And you see Victor Timely, a mustache with gla round glasses, version of Kang. Kang called Victor Timely. And he's like, time, you can't let them touch time. Something, I can't remember what he said verbatim, but I, oh man, this, the end credit scene was great, because then Kang, uh, Mobius says, I thought you told, you, you said he was a, a dangerous figure. And Loki's like, he is. Oh. It felt so good, and then it said Kang will return, and I'm just like, yes, yes. I already knew going in what, what they, what the end credit scenes were, but just seeing it for real, it was, it was glory. As Loki says, it was glorious. Oh man, my glory. This is, this is something I've been dreaming. I mean, see Kang. I mean, to see Kang on the big screen was great. Um, so guys, by the way, my closing thoughts here. I love this movie. I really did. I love this movie. I don't care. Come at me. Come at me with your hate and trash. Come at me. I mean, I saw it with my friend that said he thought it was dog shit, okay? But I could get kicked off YouTube for saying that. I'm just kidding. Um, we, we talked about it, clicked the card, and watched it. But at the end of the day, my closing thoughts are I love the movie. I'm sorry. I did. I, I, I loved it. I cannot wait to see Kang again. The Kang Dynasty is something. When the Kang... Dynasty, when the name of that movie was revealed, I'm like, yes! And Secret Wars is happening. I cannot believe that this is actually happening on my Earth that I'm living on. Because if they had just ended Marvel with with um, Endgame, I, I wouldn't have known. Like, I wouldn't have cared. I would have said, oh, that's too bad that they're ending Marvel. But it is what it is. But they didn't. And you know what happened? We're getting all this stuff that's coming out. And now, I'm sorry, I might make a video talking about Marvel and my excitement for Disney and Marvel and everything. Um, because I, I'm actually hopeful that they're delaying stuff, that they're picking up the pace, that they're cutting back. So I'm excited. But that's besides Ant-Man 3. But my, I, I love this. I cannot wait for the future for what's coming. Secret Invasion is coming next. And then we get Guardians 3. So I'm hopeful. I kept Guardians 3 in my tie into nothing. So I already talked about that with my friend. But... I am pumped, excuse me for my breathing, but I am pumped for this. I would give this one a, I know this is outrageous, come at me with your hate, but a 7 out of 10. And I don't remember what my score was for this, or for, not for this, for uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Not Thor Love and Thunder, I did not like that whole lot. For, I like that more than my friend did, but for Multiverse Madness, I don't remember what my score was on that, but for, for this movie, it has to be a 7 out of 10. It has to be. 
Um, I would definitely watch this again on Disney+. Plus. I would definitely go back to pay money for the theater. My friend won't. I would watch this again on Disney+. Plus. I'm not going to go see this again in theaters. If my, my, my parents... I know my dad is going to like this movie. My mom probably won't. But I was saying to my friend, I, he said, my mom, my, my, my friend's mom wants to go see it. And he's like, I said, yeah, my mom does too, man. I don't know if, I don't know if it's good or if it's going to be a good one to watch because they both like the Ant-Man movies. But anyway, I'm just making a statement, not saying that people are, some people are dumb, but some people might like, not like this movie, not understand the movie because if some people haven't seen Loki and aren't like, okay, I don't know who that is. I don't get that. I don't get this. That's why. But, uh, yeah, that's my score. That's my thoughts on it. Don't forget to hit the like button if you did enjoy this video. Or, not only did you not enjoy the video, did you like the movie? Do you just want to hit that like button for liking the movie? Did you not like the movie? Hit that dislike button if you didn't. Well, if you didn't like the movie, don't hit the dislike button. But I don't know. What did you think? Of the movie? Of the video? Of my thoughts? Come at me with your hate. Come at me with your love. I don't... <laughs> I love you, as Patrick says. I'm sorry. Um, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel, Lego Dude 11 and as always, don't forget to stay tuned for more movie thought, movie reviews, TV reviews, vlogs, potential Lego videos in the future. Who knows what I'll make here on the channel. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to be silly here. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow me. And as always, don't forget to keep calm. Play Lego. See you in the next one. C click the cards up there. What I have. Don't forget, uh, click the butt car, uh, videos, whatever's happening on the screen. Don't forget to keep calm. Play Lego. Peace out. Bye.